I signed off the, to, for the tree cutter to go ahead and cut the tree because of the city attorney's order, mm -hmm. it was with the condition that the applicant returned to the HLC with a plan for a replacement. Yes, yeah. I'm aware of that, that when the actual order was given to, 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 to remove the tree, there was not a condition because there was a debate about who would pay for it. Since the city was directing this action, the actual property owner was discussing why am I being imposed this requirement to replace the trees. So I, th there is a correct uh, implication here that we, we wanted the tree replaced and that we put placed this condition. And so clearly the property owner was aware of it and now we get into the interesting part about what type of species would be replaced and uh, what the condition was and how it was enforced. And um, this is where we get into a question of, well, are we communicating internally? And in this, in retrospect, I think we do need to have um, better communication. Obviously, the, uh, the direction from the Street Tree Advisory Committee that was given to staff was informally presented to this commission when uh, I guess Mr. Adams was reviewing this application. That was formally that was just, presented. That was it just was not. for me. I never. I didn't. Had okay, any so it was not. I'm not saying it was not. not. At all. No. So no. yes, not. so we were not aware of no. this, and so we admit that that fact happened. It could have happened um, internally through an email or a, a oral conversation because in the midst of this discussion we were talking with uh, the uh, parks and rec staff regarding our proposed ordinance amendments and there they have suggested that they advised us but it didn't get to the commission so we are admitting that that did, in fact did not happen so what I suggest we do is that we establish a requirement that there be a memorandum when we when actions of this type occur that the staff from the parks uh, and uh, street tree advisory committee do uh, forward something in writing so this commission is aware of, of any conditions on, on projects. Uh, the second point um, noted here is I, I heard that maybe a liaison was some uh, an idea that was suggested that I think Mr. Adams uh, suggested he would uh, volunteer for that so we could then put you on the uh, mail uh, lien list and uh, receive agendas for their items and you can be uh, on top of actions that they are taking if you're interested in that. And then what we noticed also is there is a necessary um, uh, more evaluation of what type of conditions for a tree planning and maintenance. This is something, again, Mr. Adams was questioning with uh, our guidelines. How do we impose these conditions and ensure that they get enforced? Well, what we're discovering is over the course of years, um, these type of actions that the commission made were not necessarily carried out in the form of a permit. And the reason is because often these tree removals are separate from a development proposal, that there is a separate contractor or someone coming in uh, to take a tree out, which is not involved with the actual development uh, of the property. And in this case, and this is exactly what happened. They were not proposing any other changes to the property, and they were just dealing with a tree removal. So I have, uh, or I am working with Building and Safety to establish a, a permit requirement that would uh, monitor the conditions and we'd have an actual plan that's stamped and issued a uh, permit so the conditions could be inspected and I think this is the critical last steps in ensuring that any type of conditions that we are sure to impose now that we know trees are going to die if we don't uh, I think the expectation was people would water the tree right obviously so if we need to tell people to water the tree if there's no permit irrigation system, then uh, obviously those conditions would be imposed. And maybe we can work with Mr. Adams on, on standard conditions that we would impose to make sure that the tree survives. So those, that sort of concludes my presentation. I wanted you to get the background, and if you have any specific other ideas about uh, what suggestions we can do, make to, to this process. Um, we're also open to hear from Mr. Cunningham if he agrees with our proposals. Thank you. Um, I do have public comment, and I'm going to open public comment. The first person will be Mr. DeForest. Thank you. I'm glad this, thank you, Kellum DeForest. Uh, one thing this points out 
is that the landmark designations, future landmark designations, I don't know whether they can be uh, old landmark designations, I mean current landmark designations, uh, can pinpoint landscape because there's nothing in the ordinance right now that says that the character defining trees surrounding a uh, or part of city landmark if they aren't specifically pointed out in the landmark designation the owner can cut them down at, at will. Uh, that needs to be uh, as witnessed uh, on Santa Barbara Street a few months ago. Uh, I do want to ask about the uh, you uh, about the status of the new tree ordinance, and will the fine structure that is proposed for the new tree the new uh, Tree ordinance apply to trees in the EPV. You had the the hundred dollars was posted here, but the new fine, the proposed fine structure for the new ordinance is much uh, is 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 going to make the destruction of trees or removal of trees much more pricey and might discourage developers. Uh, and then what is the, in the application to the uh, EPV, who, who decides about a allegedly dise diseased tree? A number of years ago, uh, we had a eucalyptus tree that the applicant was claiming was diseased and was going to fall down and uh, uh, according to an arborist they hired and the neighbors uh, got another arborist and said the tree was in fine shape and just needed to be uh, prudently pruned. Okay, thank you. Thank you and Perhaps Mr. McMillan would like to reply to those questions, or um, sure. Uh, with respect to the first question on landmark uh, properties, um, I know we've had recent discussions with Jake, uh, our historian, on the degree that a landmark designation allows you to go into someone's yard and control every feature of their um, landscaping, and. Um, I think that what we've determined is that um, if the designation included the boundaries of the garden, it gives you greater authority to do that type of a review. But if it's just the structure, it's really a setting issue. And what we've determined is that um, our historian will evaluate the changes being proposed and determine if the setting is being altered. And that could include, um, I think we've seen water fountain features or significant mature trees. Yeah, just to uh, elaborate a little bit more on what Mr. Lomond is saying, normally when we designate a structure as a landmark, we designate the structure and we specify a five or six foot border around it so that we can have uh, some control. We don't necessarily want somebody planting vines on a building that didn't have vines, for instance, so you have a little bit of control over the landscaping. We do have some special circumstances, for instance, the George Washington Smith House up on uh, Pedregosa that uh, we actually landmarked the entire garden because the garden was found to have historic significance equal to, the, to that of the house. Um, so generally, when a, when a project is tagged as historic, if somebody comes in for a permit and it, and it includes something that's going in the yard, we do see it. So, uh, some things do fall through the cracks, but generally, if, if everybody's looking at the tags, we do see it, and we realize you know, they usually come to me with an opportunity to make a determination to I think it's going to have a potential negative impact on the historic landmark. Unfortunately, the trees at, uh, at uh, 1732 Santa Barbara Street, uh, that didn't happen, and so we're, we're trying to make sure that that's not going to happen again, that we will have the ability to at least comment on it. 
Thank Madam you. Chair, the second question was, will the new fine structure uh, apply to the uh, trees within El Palo Viejo District? The ordinance or the draft ordinance has not been prepared, but um, I've had some initial discussions with the uh, city attorney's office, and that uh, second part of that discussion uh, has not occurred at the ordinance committee yet. They've had a discussion on how to um, regulate the pruning of trees, and the second component would be the fine structure with the removal of trees. But the uh, answer to that question is that our primary focus will be on commercial and multifamily uh, developments, that we will have... A, um, a, a mechanism in place to, to have more uh, regulations on those type of developments. And what we're concerned about is that um, we don't want to over-regulate on a private residence, that we don't want to get into someone's backyard and establish th those type of regulations in that manner. But there will be a, a sliding scale based on size of tree, and uh, you'll have an opportunity to review that proposal when it comes forward to see how, if you agree with those proposals. And then with respect to who decides it's, uh, whether the tree's tr uh, disease, we do have a provision, which I haven't noted on the, uh, the presentation, that requires a uh, certified arborist to make that uh, you know, claim that, that that, in fact, is disease. And also our city staff that are also certified have, have the ability to, to make those decisions. Great. Thank you. If there is no other public comment, I see someone who wants to... You'll identify yourself and Bob Cunningham. Yes. Bob. Thank you. Landscape architect and member of the Street Tree Advisory Committee. Um, uh, we've Jaime's done a good job of explaining uh, the process, and I'm gratified to see that there would be a liaison. Uh, I think that's wonderful. Um, we only meet once a month, so it's a pretty you know, an unimposing uh, task. My main issue is the replacement of the silk oak with the cork oak. And I think that uh, obviously there, there, there may be extenuating. Thank you, Kellen. There may be extenuating circumstances uh, that need to be reviewed thoroughly. But uh, I, I think our position uh, at the, the Street Tree Advisory Committee was that there was no compelling reason not to replace the, the silk oak with another silk oak. Uh, I, I, I would like to see some statement of policy regarding landmark trees that states if a landmark tree is destroyed and necessarily removed, that it be replaced with like species. Uh, the Arlington silk oak was in that location for three quarters of a century and hadn't done any damage to its surrounding pavement or planter. Uh, there, you know, I'm not sure what what all the arguments were against replanting that tree, uh, but to me, they would not. You know, I can't, I can't see any compelling reason not to have replaced it with with like species. Uh, you know, we've we've got a recently designated landmark tree on Santa Barbara Street between Coda and Gutierrez that was part of a project that Mr. Lenvik and I did, uh, the Office Max project. It's a huge eucalyptus citriodora. Um, you know, someday it may it may have to come down. I would hate to see that because the res the space around it is restricted that we wouldn't still go ahead and put in uh, another eucalyptus citriodora rather than something that that uh, you know in an original design with no existing tree you know we may have put something else in there we may have not have planted a tree at all but it was important enough to be designated a landmark and i think in in cases like that we need to respect that and replace it replace it with the uh, the right kind of tree. Thanks. And that's that's essentially it, you know, f for for this meeting um, and yeah. I have a sort of ignorant question and I might ask our historian about that. It's sort of a philosophical <coughs> question about when something comes down that's what it was is the theory that it shall be replaced with the same thing. Pretty much a landmark. Thank piece. you. That's the case. Thank you. Then that is okay. Unless there's some health and hazard 
issue, but there has never been one. I mean, usually they replace by the same species, mm -hmm. same kind. Well, then the question is, as Mr. Cunningham has stated, whether that should be part of the policy. A landmark trees, yes. Well, we can, we can make a motion to a policy of that effect, and I think that if we had the chance to do it over, I think we would want the same species replaced at that location. And as a general policy st statement, we, we can make a motion making that statement. If I can make one more suggestion, uh, you know, there may need to be some sort of appeal process where if an owner doesn't want to go along with that designation, then he can go to, well, uh, he can go to city council or maybe the street tree advisory committee or, you know, the some, street, the street some tree panel of, you know, the, the, the street tree advisory committee has, uh, you know, one certified ar arborist, uh, three landscape architects. And uh, you know, a very qualified botanist, uh, and plus we've got the advantage of the street tree inspector and the urban forest superintendent, who are both certified arborists. And I think, you know, we we might be able to serve in that capacity. But I think there should be an appeal. Obviously, you, you just don't want to make it black and white. But I think it needs to be carefully worked out. Thank so you. That, okay. I, and I I am opening for questions from the commission, please. Madam Chair, there, are, yeah. um, there, there may be circumstances when a replacement tree of a different species may be warranted in that, um, for instance, in the case of the silk oak tree, uh, it was called the liar tree. It had a very unusual branch formation, and that's what made that tree really, you know, pop, so to speak. And, um, but the, the, the issue with that particular type of tree is it has a wide-spreading canopy versus when um, the HLC determined that maybe a cork oak would be a more appropriate tree. It's, it's a taller skyline, narrower tree. Also, you got to keep in mind, for instance, like where we had the the wall that was being destroyed by the large eucalyptus up on the Upper East Side in front of Marymount. Um, again, if they were to replace it with a, a similar type of tree, you're, you're just going to invite the same type of problem. So it may be more of a case-by-case -case basis um, because once you know the, the uniqueness of that lyre tree was its was its branch formation. Once it's gone. The uniqueness is gone with it. Even if you replace it with another liar tree, it'll never be exactly the same. And so, in some, and you know, in some cases, it may or may not be. You know, I think I think there should be a provision for case by case study review of that. And there may be rare cases where we need to do something where it's a different species than what was originally there. Thank you. Are there uh, any questions? Yeah, I guess I have okay. a question. It's like th this tree. We we were looking at this thing maybe maybe a month after the, the the it took place. I heard about it about three weeks after it took place. I, I wonder if there's a way to you know inform the commission if there's a landmark tree that was removed or something. Uh, what, I guess it's kind of a comment too. Why wouldn't we receive some kind of notice because it was a landmark tree? Madam Chair? Yeah. The, well, you did. Um, when it, when, when the. We, we did eventually. An enforcement, an enforce, yeah, the enforcement case was opened and the was, owner finally submitted a plan, uh -huh. of, but it was for a, a Swan Hill fruitless olive, which the HLC um, did not approve. They approved the 48 inch cork oak. So they, they wanted the, the Swan Hill fruitless olive in the former location of the Arlington Silk Oak. And then they also requested some plantings in the streetscape planter and to repaint the exterior of the building. That was the plan that Cheryl Jensen brought to the commi commission. Right. So but, the but. To period of time between the time the tree was cut and then when I contacted you, it was, it was a few months because they, they, nothing ever happened Excellent. on it. Yeah. Well, it's almost like I feel like we should get an alert, but anyway. Further questions? Oh, yes. Um, I was noticing under uh, Ida B under definitions to cut a tree down or to prune a tree in such a way that its natural character is significantly altered. I've noticed people have been pruning hakarandas, uh, and I don't know enough about trees. But it just struck me that this may be a way to keep them from blooming. That's that's an interesting question. I've uh, actually filed a complaint with the urban forest superintendent regarding the jacarandas in front of the 
Wells Fargo exactly. Bank. Yeah. Um, I've seen it elsewhere, but that's the biggest. It, it will be interesting to see if when the tree, you know, refoliates, uh, whether it actually blooms later in the year. They do sometimes okay. bloom in the fall. Okay. Uh, but I suspect you're right that it was, it's a preventive measure to keep the flowers off the pavement. Thank you. If no other questions, we'll have, oh, yes, questions. Mr. Lamont, are these... Um, Statutes are they applicable to the city crews themselves? Also, or are they governed by the same? Um, to the degree that um, they're on um, property, property that's public, yes. But there, there is more latitude on street trees. That's one of the, the complaints that has been uh, has erupted over the controversy of how the city uh, notices their projects. And we will be looking at uh, their noticing provisions also, how, how, how that is disclosed. Yeah. Because right now, I think they post the actual trees, but there's not necessarily a public notice given in the paper regarding significant amount of trees being removed. Ending tree. Right. Well, we'll look at it because one of the concerns that we've had with um, some very publicly visible uh, locations was that um, – the item was often referred maybe to a board or commission, but we didn't notice it at the board or commission, and maybe it deserves a wider noticing requirement. So we will be looking at noticing requirements. Thank you. Oh, question? Yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I'm interested in knowing more about the, um, the uh, who confirms the health of the tree. Like I remember in the case, for instance, uh, of the, uh, the tree in, in, in the eucalyptus and uh, Paseo Rubio, in which the owner said, well, you know, that thing may or may not be, uh, I mean, I uh, uh, remember that a few years ago, right across the, the street from the mission, right across the, the plaza. And so I understand that an arborist, because arborists, you know, uh, arborists can say a lot of things quite often, you know, like a tree is moral, you know, not so sure. And if the owner says, well, I need an arborist report saying that that tree is dying, you know, I'm not, I mean, I'm not sure how to say this, but there is a way for an arborist to say, yeah, this tree is less than 100% healthy and, well, it may die. So is there then like a, a peer review by, by the city arborist by the, to, 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 to make sure that tree is definitely a hazard? Or how does it work? Uh, I, I can tell you that that's, that's what we do when we, we get a letter. We either we work with our commission landscape architects uh, or uh, city staff to evaluate those proposed, uh, you know, removals. And, um, we're, you know, it, the larger the tree, the more reluctant staff is going to um, not accept it without some assurance that someone else has reviewed it. But we don't necessarily have a peer review. We, it's, it's more of a, a check-in with the, the folks that uh, are responsible to grant approvals. If I can add one more thing. Sure. Our, our own city arborist went and inspected that tree. Obviously, it's on city property, so, you know. We needed to protect our own interests and, and found it to be sound. Mm -hmm. So we, we do have that guide or guard. Thank you. I'd also like to ask a question of a more timely nature. Given recent events and the fires we had back in November, when does the fire department get involved and, and um, how much say do they have in terms of uh, you know, tree removals in terms of fire safety? And I'm, I don't know that that's in our, necessarily in our ordinance, but I was just going to ask Mr. Lamont if he had any information on that. <laughs> You're here, Jake. We we have we have um, specific requirements in the high fire area hazard areas that we we um, work with them on uh, clearing and um, for um, abatement provisions. But they don't normally come in and require a tree to be removed. It's more of a clearing effect. Uh, in rare instances. Um, They've done a good job with um, the design of homes and advising folks where not to plant trees. So for the most part, um, we don't run into that problem where the fire department is dictating the removal of a tree. Uh, it's more of a clearing clearing it's issue. Right. Okay. Thank you. Now, are, do we have any comments from commission members? Yeah, I, I would Adams? just uh, I agree with the, the discussion here today. I think it's good to have these discussions because obviously we move forward in a more healthy way for trees. And I encourage the ordinance committee and city staff to, con uh, to continue to 
examine that and to strengthen our tree and tree pruning ordinance. But I just want to put forward a just a general policy mo uh, uh, statement that uh, it, you know in, in the future, if there is a landmark tree that that is removed, it should be replaced with a like kind. I think that we all wish we made a mistake, or we all wish that could have been dialed back. But I think generally we could find con some consensus on that. And I think we should make that determination. And then furthermore to that, to you know, a appoint the landscape architect on this commission as that liaison to the uh, street, street tree advisory committee. advisory committee. Are there any additional comments? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. I just would hate to see this lead to more regulation and more bureaucracy, and I, I don't, I don't want to. I, I want to see process improvement within our existing structure. So I'm all for the liaison. That's a great idea. I think that's going to very much resolve most of most of the issue. Um, and as far as just a suggestion, maybe to the ordinance committee under findings, under the preservation ordinance here, add a finding that, uh, that the, there be a replacement finding. Um, there's a list of five findings here that uh, the Board of Park Commissioners make. So one, an additional finding could just be that that, a re, that replacement does happen for one, and, and Part B would be uh, the species. Would, it would go back to HLC or some reviewing body that approves their proposed replacement species. But I just, on a, on a broader note, I, I don't want to see more staff burdened with more noticing. Staff is already busy enough and, and tell us that uh, our, our city budget, we just heard a report last week how the budget's suffering. Um, adding more burden and more regulation only adds more to the budget. And, and therefore budget deficit. So I just, I don't want to see an expansion here. I just want to see an improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments? Well, just that I think with, with my suggestions, it's not an expansion of anything. It's really getting the liaison, the communication in place. And, and, and I, I really like that suggestion. I think that we could forward that to the ordinance committee to make findings for uh, re removal of a landmark tree, to uh, make findings uh, for an appropriate replacement species. Um, well, the thing is usually, usually if there's a landmark tree, any action before that tree should come to this commission. So I don't see why that needs to be a finding of these other commissions because we are tasked with making decision of a landmark trees or any specimen trees. So and so with concerning the silk oak tree, that's where the, the communication broke down and we didn't get that to come here for the review. And so um, I don't see any expansion. I just think th these things need to be tightened out. You know, where landmark tree, any specimen tree, HLC. No question about it. That's instead of making findings elsewhere. There aren't the findings. No, there aren't. Mr. Pujol. Yeah, I, I was uh, curious about the the, the, uh, the the positioning of the Street Tree Advisory Committee as an appeal body. It seems like an interest, interesting way to uh, avoid, you know, putting council into one more appeal in an area in which they don't may not know as much. So it seems like um, uh, it will be appeals from the Parks Commission, I guess, or from, or from Landmarks and ABR related to this kind of trees. Instead of going to council, then maybe they just go through the uh, through this tree committee. I mean, it just seems like a nice way to, yeah. you know, it seems like a good process. I'm, I'm just forwarding that as an idea. I'm leaving it's more appropriate for the Parks Commission because the advisory committee is not. We'll, we'll certainly ask the question. Um, I, I think that's a you know, we're, we're taking in your input today, and whatever we um, forward, uh, it, it does have to get scrutiny with our city attorney to see if it's legally defensible. And as Mr. Cunningham is, is mentioning, that there is a process already in 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 the works, and normally your decisions are appealable to council. If we want to change that, uh, we need to go forward and ask whether that's possible. Thank you. I'm going to summarize the 
comments, if I may, and that is, um, in general, we don't wish to burden the staff or applicants or uh, anybody with more bureaucracy. However, the suggestions that you have made, Mr. Limon, regarding requiring a memorandum to the HLC on specific actions or conditions imposed, appointing the landscape architect on the HLC as a liaison to the Street Tree Advisory Committee, and some way of um, dealing with replacement tree of like species and that does not for landmark. for landmark trees that does not um, require one condition of it always being the existing tree, but that there are various ways to um, do a case by case basis so that the right tree is replaced rather than an arbitrary condition. Uh, I don't think I need to ask for a vote on this, do I? It's just a discussion. No, it's a discussion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. The next item is 1221 State Street Concept Review. Down. Add yourself another job. If you will um, introduce yourself, please. Yes, my name is Ed Lindvik. I'm here representing the uh, property owner. Thank you. Uh, and what we are proposing to do is install security gates uh, at the three public access points at Victoria Court. Hmm. Um, there is um, Victoria Court has one, State Street has one, and the back parking lot. Uh, ha is one access point in there for me. Uh, they have had vandalism recently. Um, they were broken windows back in this area, back in here. And um, so they feel that um, some gates for after hours would be appropriate. Uh, gates, of course, would not be closed to prevent access to Sh Soho and, and other areas, but um, when the property is really pretty closed down and no one's there that there would be a uh, control. Excuse me. The photographs of the site are on the second yeah. page. Just so I you see. Know. Yes. Would you? Sure. We're looking at them upside down. Uh, uh -huh. This is from the from the parking lot entry right here. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at um, from Victoria Street, this is Victoria Street elevation, and it's a very narrow entry adjacent to uh, the restaurant there. And then there's the State Street entry, and again, it's it's relatively narrow, mm -hmm. as you can see. And placement of these gates is dependent on uh, the structure that's there, as well as not a, not obscuring the windows, so on and so forth. Thank you. If you mm -hmm. go back, so we can just look again. At, if you just point at the locations for the camera as to where these gates are going to be. Okay. I see it's here. Yes. Here. Here. Right. And here. Right. There's a a, a, paired, a paired gate in each of the situations. Um, the one off the parking lot at the back is uh, this whole this whole right here, I believe. Okay. And the State Street elevation is right there. Uh, there, right there. And the Victoria Court elevation should be right there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are, do you feel you're done with your presentation? Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, we're, we're iron, it's wrought, wrought iron gates. Uh, what, I, what I do want to maybe show you is that um, on other buildings in the area, um, this is uh, on State Street, just down um, a, a few doors. Mm -hmm. And you can see that there, those um, have been gated as well. This is, uh, was it uh, 11, 1119 State Street, recently remodeled. Um, and all that remodel work came to you. That also has has gates mm -hmm. on them. This, from the parking lot at the rear, 
from, right. from the parking lot. Right. Yeah. Right. right. And so they they have had the same similar kind of security issues, and uh, uh, they were gated as well. So there is precedent for this occurring both in this block and the block for the south. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll ask for public comment. Is there any public comment? Seeing none, I'll take it back to the commission for questions. Do yeah. I have both? Oh. The, uh, the the gates. What? When will they be open? When will they be closed? Well, they will they will open when the first tenant comes in in the morning, mm -hmm. and they will be closed after the last um, guest has been there in the evening. The business day. Right. Right. There is some unknowns about this. For instance, this is the post office, and the post office has access into the public box area. Right. But also, they, they, that is public box area is open back here as well. You can walk through. So there's got to be some arrangement with the post office that would control that. Uh, Shoho Restaurant is up here, and of course they're open later in the evenings, so these gates would then be open uh, until they close. So it's it's the after hours, the two o'clock to eight o'clock in the morning period when vandalism has occurred in here that they're concerned about. There's security through here normally, uh, private security. But um, once the building is is um, once the occupants are gone, then the security is is spotty and something happens and there's no, no control over it. Thank you, Mr. Schallenberger. Yeah, I'm just curious. And this is. Victoria Court has existed the way it is for a very long time, and I'm just wondering, what's changed now that the uh, the owners feel that this is a necessary tool? They, they haven't had they haven't had the kind of vandalism in the past that they're having now, which is a function of hey, we're a denser you know denser population. There's more people downtown. There's more activity downtown. Um, you know, things. Yeah, right. It's just they simply have. You know, they, if they had not had uh, a number of windows broken in there about a month, month and a half ago, they probably wouldn't be doing this. But uh, they have simply had vandalism, which has not occurred in the past, and so they're kind of looking ahead to what they should do to protect themselves. Madam Chair? Yes. Can I just point out, it's sort of the obvious, the, the gates are very low as compared to the photographs you showed us where they cover entire openings. Mm -hmm. These will keep the honest people honest, but the type of people that are doing vandalism are just going to go right over these gates. Thank you. Um, do I have other questions from the commission? Ask a question. What, uh, on these gates where you have the big slope, like this, mm -hmm. this, uh, this one and, mm -hmm. and this one on State Street, mm -hmm. what's the lowest point? We're, it's six foot. Six. six. Okay. Yeah, right. Thank you. I, have a question about the I, I don't think any of us could probably get over that six foot gate. Yeah. But, okay. but, but and, and we're not going to do vandalism, but um, I don't. I don't. I don't know that we, we necessarily have to make them taller. I think they kind of fit the scale of the opening. And um, I have a question on the on the um, something happens here. I'm not totally clear. Uh, let me just stop here. So there are two openings here. This is this is open, right? And well, yeah, but and, and, and the, uh, the, the gate the gate is right the gate is right there, mm -hmm. of course. And this is a recess into this into this business. Right, which is right here, right? That, uh, is that, am I going to correct okay. this? Mm -hmm. yeah. But right. you're coming out, is that, is that the side? Yeah, that's solid there. Okay. All right, because, yeah, I mean, here it looks, uh, the drawing perhaps looks strange. Look well, what happened, we've drawn, we, we made one larger scale drawing, mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's going to be, it's gonna be adapted to each of its openings. I see. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, that is what's really, will be the configuration of that gate, which is that, Okay. Portion right there, and we use a half a post at at the, at the jam in that location. It's like we use a half a post there. And and this is an uh, the, this is the lock box right here. Yes. And this part right here is the cane vault. Yes. Or? Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Correct. Thank you. Any further questions? Yeah. Uh, the, the color black green. It, it would be um, it will be a black green. I mean, a, a or, or a blue, a blue black, or a, a red black. It won't be a pure black, but it would be an off black. Yes, an off black. Yeah, okay. yeah. Did, did you point out again where these windows were broken? The windows were broken uh, right here. And so, yeah. And now, right. where is the courtyard? The inside. Courtyard? Well, the courtyard is here, and the fountain is here. Okay. Right. Uh, 
Uh, there, there, were, there, there were windows scratched up and broken back in here as well. Do we have pictures of the windows mm -hmm. that were broken? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't think I do. Is that relevant? I think she's asking, so it's relevant. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. I was thinking if there's a way to secure the windows rather than building more gates. No, I do not have... Um, photographs of that interior area that was damaged. Thank you. Uh, if we're done with questions, I'll take comments. I mean, what we'd be doing yes, is we'd, Madame be, Boucher. We'd, be, we'd be putting grills on all the windows then. I mean, if that was the case. No, was yeah. We're into comments now. Uh, I have two comments on the gates. One, I think this particular shape doesn't relate to anything in the complex. And I don't think it's going to be high enough. I think you're going to have to go much higher than that. Thank you. Additional comments? Uh, Chair, yes. Uh, I, 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 I can support the use of the installation of gates uh, after hours. I think it's a, 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 it's a reality. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a reality in urban places. It's done, and it has to be done, and unfortunately, but it, it, I, I do have some comments on, on, on the, uh, the design itself. Yes. I, I agree with the comment that the, uh, about the shape and the height and also the material. Uh, I'm not sure of the, uh, the, I don't agree with the, with the uh, tubular steel, the three, and a, three, was it three inches or, yeah, the three inch tubular steel. Mm -hmm. I think some of the pictures that, that the applicant has shown are, are, seem to be more appropriate in the way the, the posters are, 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 are handled. I also think of the shape. Uh, the openings are square. I, I, you know, if, if the um, if the openings were to relate to, to the height of the uh, of the capital uh, or the open, I think it would be more of a um, more traditional. It seems like uh, we're used in in it's more contemporary to have this long kind of vehicular kind of cage, which are usually more and more spread out. And I think um, it is more traditional to have gates that are taller than they're wider. And, uh, it's just, I mean, I, I have no, no problem with height. I think like an eight-foot gate, a nine-foot gate, I think it would be more, more in scale with a large building. I mean, it simply would be more of uh, an integrated soft pattern. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments? Yeah, I just want to make a comment. It's, it's just, I'm just saying it's a shame that we have to lock up all our paseas might be a reality, but in, in, uh, it, it changes the character of things when, when gates are shut. Um, I'd like to make that comment also. I, I understand the reality, but I'm disturbed and um, depressed that we have come to this and of course, I would prefer if the existing security personnel were able to handle incidents and that we did not have to rely on these street side um, metal soldiers to keep people out. Um, do I have a motion for a continuation? And I will add my comments. The comments, as I understand them, are um, in general. We accept the concept of the use of security gates. There is precedent on the street. There seems to be um, a preference for a more traditional proportion and expression for the gate. And um, well, I think that's it. The, the materials are oh, yes. and. Um, uh, we would prefer if you did not use tube steel. How would you? You don't expect a solid stock of three inch. No, but it, uh, it, maybe a two inch, my uh, inch and a half, maybe an inch and three quarters square might work for you, for the for the posts, perhaps. Madam Chair, we couldn't hear what Mr. Pujo just said. Um, well, I think, he, we, I think we were basically saying we would prefer not to see tube steel, and we okay. prefer an alternate of solid stock. Thanks. Solid stock. And Mr. Pujo was simply giving his concepts. 
May I have a motion for a continuation? For yes, would you like whenever you're, whenever you're two back. weeks? Week, I think. Two weeks. Oh. oh. I mean, it says we can take action. I mean, wouldn't you prefer a preliminary? You no, can, I would prefer to come back for preliminary. I prefer to come back for final. They want to. <laughs> I, I think I, if I come back, it might be. <laughs> That's true. That's I, true. I, Madam Chair. Oh, I, I think there's more than a few details. I just want to clarify for Mr. Schaumberger that action may be taken if sufficient info is provided. That is basically saying that the environmental assessment is complete. Right. So it's only ready. If, if that, that means, and that means it's ready for a prelim or final if the HLC feels that it is. Okay. I move to continue for two weeks. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? No. You're you opposing and uh, yeah, because I I really Sorry. feel that uh, uh, it, I would prefer to see the windows secured and uh, inside, not for the grills. But I just would like to see that I can complete for uh, this time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you take it. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Next item is 418 State Street. If you will introduce yourselves for the record, and you oh, may have to turn you, that thing on. You get microphones. Okay. Yes. And you're on. So if anyone talks, talk into that. But you'll have to turn that on if you wish to use it. Press the middle area, and it'll turn bright green. Thank you. I have the brick in the. It's on. Yeah. Yes. Will you all introduce yourselves? Yes. Yes. I'm Howard Watash, architect. To my left, Greg Young, the owner. To his left, Krishan Gupta, tenant, India Thank House, you. owner. Thank you. Um, we have a proposal to remodel the storefront of this building. I think you have some photographs here. And do you wish to go through them or you wish us to pass them? Well, I think we we'll probably look at this one. Okay. This is to the left. Mm -hmm. And... The building to the right was has been changed. Uh, this is, let's see here, most of these are detailed shots. Uh, this is across the street. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. This is the eave detail. Um, I have a let's see a, a rendering that shows the adjacent building in its present condition. May as well show that. Um, let's look at the elevation sheet for a minute here. Okay. Elevation, floor plan, street, reflected ceiling. This is the elevation of the storefront that is recessed from the um, from the main storefront. Sections, sidewalls, sidewalls. So we would like to change this rather hideous building here. It's been like this for years, into something that looks like this, in which we leave the plaster frame as is and the eaves and insert into the rectangular opening two arches uh, with a varied um, uh, striping of uh, the arch curve and precast stone, I should say cast stone spiral columns. Uh, the storefront would be recessed. This would be a wood post and beam with a wood sash and frame uh, windows, doors and windows. And the ceiling would be uh, plaster the end walls would be plaster. The colors that we would like to use 
are these colors, where this color is the color of the post and beam. This is the color of the plaster surround. This is the color of this. There's a little variation between the rendering and the, and the color board. This happens sometimes. These are the two colors of the arch. This is the color of the brick. I have here <coughs> from the Arcadia Studios the uh, Pacific Clay products that were used for the State Street, which is called a Sunset Red. We would propose to use a burgundy, which is a little darker. It's almost like the Sunset Red in shade for the, for the floor inside here. But it does have the same uh, pattern in that the, this pattern and this pattern are, are, this, are the basket weave. Uh, and uh, does have the double soldier course uh, header double soldier header courses. Um, these two greens are the interior post and beam are the darker. The doors are the uh, lighter. This is the ceiling, and these are the ceiling beams. Ceiling beams, three large ones, and two smaller ones at the ends. I do not have uh, light fixtures with me today. The two uh, primary lighting sources are recessed compact fluorescents, and these lights here are actually smaller pendant lights, metal, pierced metal with glass, colored glass in them. They are products that are uh, provided, furnished by the uh, tenant, and they come from India. But they are very Moorish looking. I have another rendering. There's a starvation here. <laughs> and then I have another color board as well. What are the sizes of these beams? Those beams are uh, a 6 by 12 flat. And uh, the reason why they're flat is because we need to keep them up behind this arch here. And because they, in fact, uh, prevent uh, the first truss back from the storefront uh, that supports the tile roof from deflecting. It needs, it needs them, believe me. There are several things uh, shown here that are not shown on the illustration. We have a little lighted, internally lighted menu cabinet. We have a future sign. We do not want to present signs today. This is a, another item. Mm -hmm. And we have a fire department connection that is uh, proposed to protrude through the wall here. This man is blocking the fire department connection. This man right here, this little one right here. Yeah, yeah. It's right in the way. It's always a guy in a Conveniently suit. placed. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Are you done with your presentation? Um, generally, yes. I'm going to ask for public comment. If there's no public comment. I'll take questions mm -hmm. from the commission. No. Sure. Madam Commissioner? Yes. Uh, can great. you tell me what this building is? Was Pet Boys. It is okay. now going to be a, a multitude of restaurants and other retail okay. shops. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pujol? And I'm sure you thought about this. <laughs> you have an answer. Mm -hmm. the, what the whole the whole rationale around the uh, the arch? Mm -hmm. Instead of blending it, you decided to break it. Is that a practical reason because of construction and and the joints and so forth, or is it a uh, thematical direction that you want to encapsulate the India component within a framework? Very good question. Um, in looking through my books on Moorish architecture, I found that very often the frames, the arches, having different shapes and different heights and sizes and so forth, generally were inside a, a band. And not only does that band reproduce that, but it is also a transition between the existing uh, concrete, poured, poured in place concrete pilasters and frame, and this portion here, which is in fact steel frame bracing, we have to brace this storefront, and behind these panels here, 
are brackets, and those are plywood uh, wrapped uh, steel. And so this stucco, and this is painted by the way, and this is a washed aggregate sand. Uh, this uh, uh, this is, is, is separated from the plaster, from the concrete, the plaster of concrete, by this band. It is a it is a joint. So it, it is it is it is in fact both. This is very much like the architecture of Addison Mason in Palm Beach. This is typical of writing general store. Thank you. Is that is that a good thing? <laughs> Are there any other questions from the commission? Um, <clears throat> This uh, this banding right here that's just painted, yes, painted on and around and back onto the right. other side. There is a double screed that separates this plaster, painted plaster, from this plaster, which is a washed aggregate. Okay, and then I have a question uh, on the plan. Okay, th this is brick. What uh, we're looking at a, this a is floor double, plan. This is double brick as well. This these banding, this banding is the, also the, brick. This is. I yes. see. And then this is, of course, a field of brick. Field brick. This field is the same as that field, but it's a slightly different shade. Again, yeah, the, got the, the slightly darker shade. This is the shade. State Street shade. Right. And then our so shade is a little darker. Our shade is this shade. Uh huh. Right. So the other thing is that if you if you cover up these portions of the colors, you find sunny colors. If you cover up these, you find shady colors. Things that would be cooling, cool and calming. The two themes of the of the it's like a room. It's like a covered outdoor room. Are there any other questions? I do. Oh yes. I have a, a question about the area of you know in the inset above the arches. It's shown here in a almost a pattern. Uh, and I was wondering what this the, this pattern here? Yes. This is actually a textured, it's a washed aggregate. It's a sand it, basically, we, we do, they're not putting any paint on that plaster, and we are putting in colored sand, basically okay. a sand color. So it's a maybe a stain that's transparent. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> would you illuminate me regarding why it's so tight to the arch? Um, the um, the arch, the, the the lintel itself is ten foot nine inches above the sidewalk. The ceiling, bottom of the trusses, is 11 foot 6 inches above the sidewalk. We need uh, something to go through here to tie this structure together, and so we have a little bit of, we have about 6 inches from the top here. If we were to drop this down, the arches become very flat, and they become, um, uh, they, and, and the space becomes darker. The other thing is, in, if, in, in uh, looking at my books, I found that, in fact, many arches did touch their, their bands, their frames. It's not necessary, uh, necessarily so that, that there's a lot of space. In some cases, yes, but not in every case. Madam Chair? Thank you, yes. Were you, were you suggesting that it should be raised off that? top decorative piece in the middle? I simply felt that it was, or was asking the question as to why the top of the arch was quite so tight I, to I, the border. I would like, to, I would like, no, I'll make That's that That's what comment. he was explaining. Um, so are we, are, are still questions? Just, yeah, okay. Just a quick one. Uh, the, these are cast concrete uh, cast spiral swirl columns, cast stone. Okay, in in this sort of golden yellow color. The sand. It's sand. sand. That's sand. So, uh, which is this represented color right by here. that? Okay, got it. Perfect. Thank you. These 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 pieces and these pieces probably will end up being very close to the same color. Got it. Thank you. Miss um, Murray, is this standing proud of that or? Yes, about an inch and a half. Inch and a half. Just a just a band. Section. Oh, you mean, were you pointing to this, or were you yeah. pointing to, uh, this is actually it's in, uh, in, in slightly inside this plane. This band is proud. But not this one. This is all one plane. One plane. I was, I was, I thought this side. These, these are in the same plane. Okay. Yeah. There are no, oh yes, more questions? Um, I just have one question. I think, I think this is wonderfully fanciful, Howard. I think we have to be very careful in how it fits within our our ordinance. I think Howard's attempted to 
take it in the Moorish direction. But I think we have to be careful about that. And your qu or is this a comment or a question? It was a comment. <laughs> okay, that starts us into the comments then. Are there additional comments? Yes. Um, I, I'd like to see somehow, um, and I can't speak architecturally, but um, and maybe not even aesthetically, but I'd like to see the uh, less, it seems to me that the, the, the arches and the, um, well, the facade of the building, it seems like the arches are kind of stuck on, and I, I don't see, I don't see a, a feeling like that they're part of the organic whole of that, of that wall, and I know that may be difficult to do, but it's the space, I, I suspect it's at least, what I'm seeing is partly the space above that's un, un what's the word, unornamented, or somehow it's just, yes. yeah, yeah, and I'd like to see perhaps um, if, the, if the painted area was lifted off the arches a little bit to maybe break up that space, and once again, this is simply an aesthetic uh, observation, but it seems like it's a little like that. It's a little stuck on somehow. It's not part of the organic hole. Thank you. Thank which, you. Is, which is stuck on? Um, well, it seems like the arches and the painted area is stuck onto the front of the building. I don't. It's, it's, I think. I think the interior of of what you've drawn is much more a part of the building. But what's in front of it? If if there was a way to either with paint or um, Molding to somehow make it all all part, like the the building to the to, to the right, um, that way. That, that because it's not because it's all one color, it doesn't seem like it's like it's stuck on the front of a of a, of a building facade. Thank you. I get it. Additional comments, Mr. Pujol. Yeah, yeah. I, I I like to propose something. Not. I think it's um, it's forward thinking. It has, it's, it's different, it's not what you see every day. It, it, it has a purpose, I mean, it relates to, to, to the owner, to the client, I mean, to the use, it, 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 it transmits a lot of, so in, that's why I like it. I have some minor concerns that I would like um, Mr. Wittash to, to, to address. I, 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 buy, I understand the concept of, of the frame. I think the frame appears to be over accentuated that is just at least on this reveal and on, on this uh, to have it perhaps if it's just a, a, a recess like a one inch recess between the surface of, of the plaster and then it drops into the um, in, in, into the new inset just a smaller thing without making such a big deal out of the frame that would be one thing the other the second element which is I think everybody's talking about that in different manners is that the, uh, the, 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 the uh, space uh, between the arch, between the frame and, 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 the, and the, the roof is so large and it's kind of wanting to have something. It's already a little bit out of proportion in an existing case, right? And once you drop that, that space right here, it becomes even, even more, um, more awkward. So I wonder if there's something, I think something that, that uh, Mr. Drury was referring to, there's something that needs to happen up here to to integrate more the, the facade because it seems like there's a one and a two and there's a piece in the middle on camera, Alex, and the piece in the middle uh, that seems to be begging for something to happen there. And I, I th that's that's the way I, I see this. That so you're, talking about, you're talking about the plaster band that surrounds. This well, two, two things. One one is, is that this this band could be uh, reduced in, in, in as an expression to be minimized. And I understand why you want to break the the, 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 the planes and, and and materials and so forth. But it also seems that there's something else missing up here that makes the uh, an, a, an elevation that is already a little bit out of scale. Between, between the opening and, 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 and it makes it worse because you're, you're lowering the, the, uh, the openings with, with the skin. Thank you. Additional comments? Yeah. Mr. Uh, oh, Mr. Schallenberger? Um, actually, it's back to questions for a second. I, I wondered, did, did you study the use of cast concrete for the frame and, as opposed to steel? Uh, yes. Uh, Cast concrete um, will not allow us to have slender columns, and also uh, we want to put the, the we want to put brackets in the corners here, and we need something to get down to a grade beam, and it's not easy to do that. 
you don't get enough. Right. No, I understand. I, I, I was just thinking in terms of you, you mentioned the proportions of the arch. If, if you were to lower or uh, if you were to lower the top of the arch to get away from the top of the band, um, a way to resolve that is to narrow the dimension of the arch. But I understand you're trying to keep the narrow columns there. So I just I just wasn't sure if you know if the pilaster on the outside edges, if that were all a monolithic concrete doweled in to the to the frame there, if that could have helped resolve that proportion issue. And then also, if it's doweled in, then you don't need a band. You know, you can just plaster down, and you won't have the cracking issue that you're probably going to have here. Which I, I can see that the band would resolve that potential expansion crack. Um, but I was just wondering if you had, had studied that. Looks great, though. Uh, other comments, Mr. Yeah. Adams? Um, <clears throat> Let's see. The, I, I really like this proposal. I think it shows imagination, but I have a couple m minor details. One is, as you as you walk along the street, I know the doors open pretty close here, but I, the, the, this opportunity is an opportunity for an urn with the plant in it. Uh, Are you a landscape artist? I'm a landscape artist. <laughs> um, that, with, with, with this kind of patterning, I, I think it needs something. And a, and a really nice urn with something green in it. And the same goes for the opposite side. I think that, that could help. I know the doors are tight, but there's got to be something that could, could really uh, break up the, the wall. The other thing uh, is um, on your arch, you're calling out a golden tan. I feel like that's too intense. I feel like whatever, and you're sort of indicating that the color of this plaster would possibly match that and I, I think that simplicity is a is a good way to go rather than in high contrast I think this golden uh, tan with, with this is just a little too garish I think you're going to have enough interest in your archways and your columns it's a saturation issue maybe. yeah it's, it's, it's like so much happening in a tight little space I, I, I love your uh, the, 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 the ceiling there in, in a blue. I think that'll be really wonderful. And then um, I, I like your brick color, slightly differentiating it, but very similar texture. So uh, most of all, I like it, but uh, I th uh, you need to study an urn situation and uh, the <coughs> uh, be, be careful and simple about the color between the bands. Yes? One other question. Uh, with regard to the columns, are these, there's a steel post that's a structure, so is, will there be a joint that you'll see? Or are these going to... These are splits. They are splits. Yeah, they're okay. spiral, uh, cast stone spiral. And, the, and then can we see, uh, when you come back, just how the, the pilaster columns engage the wall, exactly how, how those terminate to the, to the they wall? They just turn, the split goes right against they're the wall. They're just complete halves? Right. Okay. I have a capital and the arch falls onto the capital. Okay, Madam thank Chair? You. Yes? Um, those split columns always drive me crazy. Is there any way that um, that center column could be done in a single cast so that you don't get that seam? That, that's the first thing my eye goes to, is the cheap seam, and then it feels fake. The rest of the building feels fake to me because I see that seam. And I, I don't know how much, how, how much that may affect the others, but if that center column, a few extra bucks put into that center column so that it could be one single pour, uh, I think would really make a big a statement on that small elevation. Well, there's a, that is a, I'm sorry, should I wait? No. There, it, the choices are um, splits, one vertically, or sections. And so you see joints no matter what you do. Yeah. And and so what we thought we would do is, is do splits and have a very tiny, very small brow joint so that it would be and these also the spirals follow you know the way they join together so you basically you're seeing shadow lines on, and a pattern very strong pattern going up the column and the, the the joint is is kind of fades into that but that's just me talking I'm going to summarize the comments unless there are additional comments uh, uh, yes mr. Peugeot I'm, I'm not so sure if I agree with toning down the arch colors. I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to see, I mean, 
I'm not sure if it's a universal. I mean, like we all make comments, and we're not sure how if they all agree to all of the comments. So yeah. uh, I think if the chair needs to kind of clarify the, these type sure. of things. Uh, I, I mean, I understand that the, there's, a, there's a concern, but I'm not sure if throwing it down is, 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 you know, sometimes it's good to go bold. You know, like in the building on Chapala Street, the, uh, the one coming out, uh, they have very strong arches with, with Moorish, like Cor Cordova type of mosque. And uh, they do work very well. So, uh, Perhaps yeah, I shall take a that. straw vote regarding the proposed colors. All those who can support the colors as proposed, please raise your hands. That's a majority. How many? Five? Yes. Five. All those who cannot support. <laughs> is, it, is it a violent feeling or? No, it's, no. it's fine. No. I can bet. That's fine. I, I'm a traditionalist. Okay. Okay. I'm going to summarize the comments. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a couple of comments made about the band and why it sticks out. Can I respond to that? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Um, I think we, we've had a number of fairly specific um, comments here. I think in general, we're very appreciative of the applicant and his architect for taking uh, a building and trying to do uh, a very nice, thoughtful, imaginative um, improvement for the street. This is a gift to the street, and, and we appreciate it. Um, I think that, in general, everyone is feeling a bit uncomfortable with the overall integration of your thoughtful design that you have clearly thoughtfully designed from the interior and out into the street, but the integration of the facade of the arches and the rest of the facade wall is not quite there yet. Um, comments have been made regarding um, the over-accentuation of the frame, um, integration of the proportion of the upper part between the frame and the roof rafters. But in general, it has to do with um, integration, I think, of the frame, the arches, and the entire facade. Um, suggestions have been made regarding integrating landscaping of some kind, urns, plants, some, something like that. And uh, I think that's it. I will make a two week continuance, a motion for two week continuance. Is that what you, two weeks good for you? Be very good, yes. Uh, with those, those comments. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Abstain? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you too. It's been a long time. Yes, one of those you may keep. Um, it is not 5 o'clock yet.